All right, the Browns lose 42 to 47 to the Los Angeles Chargers in a thrilling game at SoFi Stadium out in Los Angeles. I, there's just a ton to get to over nearly over a thousand yards of offense, uh, 89 points scored combined between these two teams, a fourth quarter that felt like it took forever. We got a lot to get to. Dan Lobby, let's start with you. Your initial takeaways from this one with the Browns losing in Los Angeles to the Chargers. It felt like a playoff game. It, it felt like this was, uh, you know, this game flew under the radar for some reason. It's like an enormous football game. And this, it felt like it out there. These teams got into a shootout. They were going back and forth. And it felt like we're going to see this again in January, whether it's here in SoFi Stadium or it's back at First Energy Stadium. I, I think there's a really good chance these two teams meet again. And it, it just felt like for a game that people weren't talking up a lot this week, it felt like the big game that it was. And, and I think that's, like Browns fans should be excited that there's games like this, even though the outcome wasn't what they wanted it to be. Mary Kay, how about you? Uh, yeah, you know what? My biggest takeaway from this game is just how high the bar is set for young quarterbacks in the NFL right now and how good you have to be. Particularly, it seems right now in the AFC, quarterbacking is so amazing. How good was Justin Herbert tonight? And Baker, I mean, he hung in there and he rebounded from his game. But when you think about Justin Herbert and you think about Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes and, you know, you think about all of these guys, Lamar Jackson, Joe Burrow, and just how good this quarterbacking is. This is where the bar is set. This is what you have to be able to do. You have to be able to, to get into a game like this and you have to be able to pull it out now. There were a lot of extenuating circumstances in this game. I'm not going to ding Baker too, too much for not being able to pull this one out in the end. Uh, I think there were a lot of things that happened in this game defensively for the Browns. They were down a lot of guys. They were depleted. There were some calls that were a little bit strange. I thought for the most part, he bounced back pretty well from his horrible game last week in Minnesota. Uh, but I think the number one thing in my mind is, wow, wow. It's going to be a wild ride in the AFC for a long time. And you better bring your A game every single week. Scott. Yeah, I agree with Dan. I think it was a lot like a, a playoff game. And I think the Browns, yeah, they lost this game. And we heard the same phrase quite a few times in the interviews afterwards. It was, we just didn't do enough, you know, to win the game. But I think they could walk away from this knowing that the Chargers did not get their best shot. Uh, obviously they're, Rotating in, I got a lot of guys during the game. They missing people even before they got here. Uh, so I think they could probably take some comfort in that. Maybe uh, if there is a rematch at some point, if they're going to see this team down the road. Um, so I mean, I'm not coming away from this thinking that the Browns. Well, let me put it this way: it, this is the they lost this game, and I probably feel better about where this team's at than I did last week when they beat the Vikings. How about you, Doug? For 57 minutes, they are as good as any team in the NFL. But that third and 10 call is going to stick with Kevin Stefanski until they win one of these. And if Freddie Kitchens ran the ball on third and 10 in a game like that, people would be throwing things out of the upper deck. I, I, that call is going to linger. And we saw in Kansas City them play toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Chiefs and in the end not be able to get it done. And everything you guys said is true, but it felt today like Kevin Stefanski offensive guru when they needed it in the last three minutes, like wasn't there. I don't, I don't know. So um, I, if they had won, I was prepared to say like, they're better than I thought they were going to be 13 and four and they're better than I thought they were going to be because everything you guys said is true, but it's a great, great game. That's a really good team. That is a weird way to go out, I thought. I thought that was a weird way to go out. And they're going to have to win one of these so that we stop talking about it. Because that's, I don't know how you get away from why did you do that at that moment with a team like this, with an opportunity like this. I completely agree, Doug. Uh, for me, it David Njoku proved that he's a top 10 NFL tight end today. I'm going to take a little victory lap there. He was the Browns most 
explosive pass catcher, caught all seven of his targets, 149 yards. Of course, that touchdown, a career-long 71-yarder. And when the team is not getting Odell Beckham Jr. the ball, they had to turn to David Njoku. I'm glad they did. We haven't seen something like this since Kansas City. And hopefully this is a theme that continues because this is a passing attack that gets stagnant at times. It gets predictable. They lean on the screen game. And David's a, a walking mismatch. And he showed that today. The Chargers didn't have an answer for him. And you know, perhaps he's open on a, on a third and 10 or you find a way to get him the ball rather than, than running it there to Doug's point. And to me, this is a game David Njoku needed to solidify himself. And now he can build off of this momentum as the passing game still looks out of sorts, but at least a, a, a bright spot in David Njoku. All right. So again, Browns losers 47, 42 out at SoFi Stadium in Los Angeles. Keep it locked on cleveland.com slash Browns for our continued coverage.